Okay, so we're going to solve a problem where we want to find the smallest possible value of a squared plus b squared plus c squared plus d squared, where we've got this constraint that the product of a, b, c, and d has got to be equal to 9. So now our approach to this problem is going to be to actually consider some similar but simpler cases, and then build up gradually. So the first simpler problem that we'll consider is, what if we just had two variables? So let's imagine we were trying to minimise just a squared plus b squared, where again the product of a and b had to be constant, so let's say perhaps a, b have got to be equal to 9. And you'll find by exploring this just in the two variable case that we seem to get the smallest possible value actually when a is equal to b. So let's see if we can prove this in the two variable case. So we could start off with some values of a and b that aren't equal to each other. And a nice way of writing this is instead of having a and b, we'll write it as a and some constant lambda times a for our value of b, where lambda isn't equal to 1. So that then we've got a and b aren't equal to each other. So then if we find the sum a squared plus b squared, our value of a squared plus b squared is just going to be a squared plus lambda squared a squared, and this factorises to 1 plus lambda squared times a squared. So this is what we get when a and b aren't equal to each other. So what do we do if we want to make a and b equal to each other? Well, remember that the product has got to be constant. So at the moment we've got that a times lambda a is equal to 9. So how do we split this lambda and distribute this evenly between the two numbers so that the product stays the same? Well, we just need to take the square root of lambda. And you'll notice here that actually because the product has got to be a positive number, the sign of a and lambda a is the same, so actually lambda is positive, so there's no issues with taking the square root here. So we have lambda a times the square root of lambda a again is still equal to 9. So if we try now, instead of a and b, we've got our root lambda times a, and again we've got root lambda times a. So we've kept the product the same. Let's see what happens to our a squared plus b squared now. So a squared plus b squared is just going to be two lots of, when we square the root lambda, we just get lambda, so we get 2 lambda a squared. And now we're going to compare our values of a squared plus b squared in the two different cases. So in the first case, we'll call this 1, where they're not equal to each other. We had 1 plus lambda squared, and here we've got 2 lambda times a squared, when we've now tweaked the numbers to make them equal to each other. So if we do 1 minus 2, find what is the difference between the two values. We'll get 1 plus lambda squared, both of them have a factor of a squared, so 1 plus lambda squared minus 2 lambda in brackets times a squared. And this quadratic in lambda actually factorises to become lambda minus 1 all squared times a squared. And you can see now we're onto something, that the difference between these two values is something which is a square number, so this is always going to be positive. So this is telling us then that our original value is always going to be bigger than what we get by tweaking the numbers to make a and b equal to each other. But we can actually say not just that it's greater than or equal to zero, but this is actually strictly greater than zero, because remember we imposed earlier that lambda can't be equal to one. So if lambda was equal to one, then we'd be starting with values where they are actually equal to each other. So the only case where it wouldn't be bigger would actually be when a is equal to b to begin with. So you can see then in this two variable case, if you have a and b aren't equal to each other, you can always further reduce it by setting a and b equal. So this tells us then in the two variable case, the smallest value possible of a squared plus b squared is indeed achieved when a and b are equal to each other. And now if we consider a similar problem but with three variables where we want to minimise the sum of squares subject to the product being constant, we can actually use some of what we already know from the two variable case. So let's imagine our three values of a, b and c are all different to each other. We have for example root 3, 3 root 3, and 1 could be our values of a, b and c. So now we already know from the two variable case that if you've got different values of a and b, then we can further reduce a squared plus b squared by tweaking these numbers to make them equal to each other. So we could change this to 3, 3, and 1, and this would actually reduce the value of a squared plus b squared, and hence it would also reduce the value of a squared plus b squared plus c squared. So you can see here, using this fact that we already know from the two variable case, that actually we don't need to consider cases where a, b, and c are all different from each other. We only need to consider the case where two of them are equal versus the case where all three of a, b, and c are equal to each other. 
And now you could consider examples where there's negatives involved as well. So you could make things a little bit awkward by introducing some negative signs on these numbers. But remember that whether a, b and c are positive or negative, that isn't going to affect the value of a squared plus b squared plus c squared. And similarly, because the product remains constant, if you've got two negatives here, you could just replace those by the positive versions of those numbers, and you would still get a solution where a, b, c would be equal to 9, and the sum of squares would stay the same. And actually, the same logic applies to our original problem as well, that if you have a solution involving negatives, you could just change those negatives into positives without any loss of generality, and you would get another solution. So if you assume you have a minimum, with some negatives, then you could just replace them by positives and you'd get some other values of a, b, c and d, which would also minimise your solution. So we can proceed from here then, just saying that a, b, c and d are all going to be positive. So now we want to compare the case with the three variable case where first of all a and b are equal to each other but c is different. So we'll write these as a, a, and then our value of c we'll write as actually lambda cubed times a where in order for these not to be equal to each other, we just again impose that lambda isn't equal to 1. So now our value of a squared plus b squared plus c squared, we've got a squared plus a squared plus lambda to the 6 times a squared, so we get lambda to the 6 plus 2 all times a squared for our value of a squared, b squared, c squared in this case. So then if we want to redistribute this lambda to make all of our a, b and c equal to each other, we're going to be working now with lambda a, lambda a, and lambda a. So in this case, our value of a squared plus b squared plus c squared is just going to be three lots of lambda squared times a squared. So now, just like before, we want to find the difference between the two. So if we do the sum a squared plus b squared plus c squared in the case where they're different, minus the sum where they're all the same, so we do this 1 minus 2 once again, we're going to get lambda to the 6 plus 2, then we take away this 3 lambda squared all times a squared. So we've got lambda to the 6 plus 2 minus 3 lambda squared all times a squared, which we can then, so that's lambda to the 6, we can then write all of this as lambda to the 6 minus 3 lambda squared plus 2, all multiplied by a squared. So the idea now is we want to show that this quadratic in lambda is always going to be positive. But actually to reduce this and make it a little bit nicer to work with, we'll introduce a new variable u, which we'll just define as equal to lambda squared. So now this becomes a cubic, u cubed minus 3u plus 2, all multiplied by a squared. And we want to show then that this is strictly greater than zero, so that the sum a squared plus b squared plus c squared is always bigger when you have different values of a, b and c versus making them all the same. So now we can see that this a squared term is always going to be positive, so we only really need to focus on this cubic in u, so we focus on u cubed minus 3u plus 2. And if we want to factorise this, you can see just quite easily by inspection that if u is equal to 1, this is going to be 0. So if we've got a root at 1, then we can take out a factor u minus 1. So then we could do this by polynomial division, or again, just by inspection, you'll see that we need to have u squared, we need to have a plus u, and finally we need minus 2 in order for this to be equal. And then we can factorise this quadratic in u as well. So we keep our u minus 1, and this becomes u minus 1 times u plus 2. So the whole cubic in u is actually just u minus 1 all squared times u plus 2. But then remember that u is actually equal to lambda squared, so we can write all of this then as lambda squared minus 1 all squared multiplied by lambda squared plus 2. So this is looking really good because now we've got something lambda squared plus 2 is definitely always positive, and then we've also got something squared here which is again always going to be positive. And we can actually say that this is going to be strictly positive because, first of all, we've imposed that lambda can't be equal to 1. And we also couldn't have lambda equal to negative 1 just because we're working without any loss of generality now in the case where a, b and c are all positive. So this is indeed always positive, which tells us then that the difference between our a squared, b squared plus c squared in either case is bigger 
when we have different values. So we're saying then that the minimum is achieved in the three variable case where a, b and c are all equal to each other. And now we're ready to tackle the original problem with four variables. So again, we can build on what we know from the three variable case by considering, first of all, if all four of our a, b, c and d were different, or perhaps if only two of them were equal to each other, then we know that we could tweak the values of three of them, make them all equal to each other, and this would reduce the value of our a squared plus b squared plus c squared. And because we've left d alone there, it would hence also reduce the value of the total sum of all of the squares there. So in this case where a, b, c are different, or if two of them are equal to each other, we know from the three variable case that we can reduce the sum just by setting them all equal to each other. And remember as well, we're working without any loss of generality in the case where a, b, c and d are all positive. So if any of them were negative, you could just replace them by their positive counterparts without affecting the value of the product or the sum of squares there. So we only really need to consider now either we've got the case where three of them are equal and the other one takes a different value, or all four of our values are equal to each other, because we know that having two equal or none of them equal doesn't give us a minimum solution for the sum of squares. So if we look at the case where three of them are equal to each other and the other one is different, we'll write our a, b, c and d as a, and the other one we'll write as lambda squared times a. So this is fine so long as lambda squared isn't equal to 1. And you'll note that we have something positive there, but that's fine because we're working in this case where a, b, c and d are all positive. So then the sum of squares is just going to be a squared 3 times plus, we'll have lambda squared squared times a. So the sum of squares is going to be 3 plus lambda to the power of 4 times a squared in this case. So let's imagine now we want to redistribute this lambda squared evenly between a, b, c and d. So then a, b, c and d are all just equal to root lambda times a. So we've got root lambda times a for our values of a, b, c and d. So then when we find a squared plus b squared plus c squared plus d squared in this case, we do root lambda squared just gives us lambda times a squared, and we get four copies of this. So we've got four lambda a squared is our value of the sum of squares in this case where we've tweaked the values to make them all equal to each other. So again we're going to now do the first value minus the second value to see what the difference is. So if we calculate 1 minus 2 we're going to end up with we've got lambda squared plus 3 and then we take away the 4 lambda so we'll write this as lambda to the 4 minus 4 lambda plus 3 all multiplied by a squared. So again we want to show that this is positive so that the sum of squares in the case where they're different is bigger than the sum of squares in this case where we've redistributed to make a, b, c and d all equal to each other. So we want to show then that lambda to the 4 minus 4 lambda squared plus 3 is greater than 0 because we know that this a squared is going to be positive. And again if we want to try and factorise this quartex, we want to factorise this expression lambda to the 4 minus 4 lambda plus 3 you can again see just by inspection this is going to have a root when lambda is equal to 1. So we can take out a factor of lambda minus 1. Then we're left with a cubic, which is just lambda cubed plus lambda squared plus lambda minus 3. So you could verify this using just expanding or by polynomial division to get this. Then we've got a nice cubic term, which we can actually again see by inspection is going to be 0 when lambda equals 1. So we can pull out another factor of lambda minus 1 here. So we'll write this whole thing as lambda minus 1 all squared. We've got a second factor of lambda minus 1. And then the quadratic term we're left with, you can check, is lambda squared plus 2 lambda plus 3. So unfortunately this quadratic doesn't have as nice a factorization as before, but we can still apply completing the square now. So we leave the lambda minus 1 squared term alone, and then in the bracket here we've got lambda plus 1 all squared. Gives us lambda squared plus 2 lambda plus 1. We need this to be plus 3 though, so we just add 2 on the outside. So then you can see we've got an expression which is something squared plus 2, so this is definitely always positive. And similarly, lambda minus 1 all squared is going to be positive, so we know it can't be equal to 0 because lambda can't be equal to 1 there, so this can't be 0. So then we can say that this whole thing is indeed greater than 0. So we're saying then that 
because this was the difference between the sum of squares where we had different values of a, b, c, and d versus having them all the same, we get a bigger value for the sum of squares when a, b, c, and d are different versus them all being the same. So this tells us then that the minimum does indeed occur where a, b, c, and d are all equal to each other. So to actually solve this problem then, we just need to find values of a, b, c, and d that are all equal so that a, b, c, d equals 9. So we need a, b, c, and d are actually all just going to be equal to root 3. So then our sum of squares is just going to be 4 lots of root 3 squared, or 4 times 3. So the minimum possible value for a squared plus b squared plus c squared plus d squared, subject to this constraint, the product has to be 9, is going to be 12 then. And you can also achieve this by using some negatives. So you could have pairs of negative root 3. So you could have two, or you could have all four of a, b, c, and d could be negative root 3. And you would still maintain the same product being 9, and the sum of squares would still be 12, the minimum there.